The Fuji Cast is an independent loading zone production. Kev, you've changed. You've changed. I knew you would. I knew it wasn't all beer swilling rugby, Kev. When he turned up at the badminton horse trials, did you go? Did you go in your Range Rover? No, we went in a Kia Sportage. Oh, you let the team down, Kev. <laughs> hey? There weren't that many Range Rovers there. Right? They they get their own separate place. Badminton horse trials. That sounds very posh, Kev. I mean. You're one step away from stepping down on the divots at a polo match, aren't you? <laughs> um, yeah, kind of. It is. It, I mean, there is elements of the super rich and the posh there, of course. But actually, it's it's a really well done event, and yeah. it's it's open to everybody. And, and the cross country day, which is the day we go to, I've been a few times now, is great. You know, it's 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 amazing. It's it, it's such a weird experience. Mm. You have this. Um, I don't know how long it is. Like three mile long course or something and these enormous horses jumping over these enormous fences running along these enormous long gallops and you can basically walk across the track and then what happens is there's a series of guys who are all in bowler hats and ladies and they they blow it when when they when they start the first horse approaches the first fence they they blow a couple of whistles really loud and that tells people not to cross the the path in front of this enormous horse and then these whistles kind of um, bubble effect along the course. So when the second um, jump hears the whistles from the first jump, they start blowing their whistles. Yeah. So the horse can get all the way through. It's a phenomenon. They've been doing that since in, in for 75 years. What? Uh, there's obviously a much easier technical, technologically better way of doing well, it. It must be an app these days. Yeah. An app. That's wow. Probably, yeah. Or electric fences or gates or something, but yeah. no, they just do it that way. And it's brilliant. I love it. I absolutely love it. Electric yeah. fences and gates. You can't taser the guests as the horses are coming. No, 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 but you could have... Get like, back! They have crossing points, you know, like train station... That's, that's thing but anyway they don't do that and uh it's amazing you yeah. know and they have all of the uh if the if the horse kind of hits a fence or something like that they they scribble down their notes and they hand the the, the judges hand it to a couple of um pony club kids on ponies who then race up to the the judge and get the score there so the the judge can kind of give them the final score 11 minutes later when they get back it's not an event i'd usually i know why you're going because you're going because rosa love loves riding now well yeah but she wasn't with us <laughs> so you went to you went to she was water. there we took her there and we brought her home oh but right she was with her friends for the whole day yeah, oh I mean, oh you're not good enough for the friends then are you? Oh, the fuji oh. cast daddy could you go and stand down there because uh jessamina and isabella they, they i don't think they're your kind of people you're too sweary, Dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you used the Viltrox, didn't you? I saw a cracking did, picture I, of them. I used yeah. the, um, you used the, the 75, Viltrox again. 75 mil, wasn't it? That, that's the yeah. one. Yeah, and, I, and I, I really tried to push it as well, you know, shooting at F1.2, super high, fast shutter speeds. Yeah. And I got some, yeah, I'm really happy with the pictures, I have to say. Yeah, I saw a few. I, I thought, uh, maybe that's the new career, Kev. To be. Hey? Eh? Yeah. To be. Jim Carner, Kev. <laughs> It's, it's, it was a very pleasant day, very I'm hot, sure very it was. sunny. Yeah, all good. Gin and tonics. Was it? Yeah, no wonder some of them were out of focus. I, I, it wasn't anything to do with the Viltrox lens. That was Kev's gin consumption as the, as the day went along. But welcome to the Fuji cast. Here we are, us and your letters and your your questions once again from the Facebook group and also those that you sent in to click at fujicast.co.uk. If you've sent some questions in, we'll get to them. Um, have you done okay on the Facebook ones? I say that with a slight wince each week because sometimes you say, no, there's nothing here. I'm not doing this next week. We've got we've had a couple in the last week or so. Yeah, um, so we've got a few to get through. And, okay. and as usual, I've got plenty that I haven't actually answered from previously <laughs> or read out previously. <laughs> from two years so ago. We're doing okay. Good. But I, I do get a sense of a little bit of apathy from the listeners yeah. and a little bit of, oh, well, they've probably answered this before, so I won't ask... Um, but you know, we may have answered it before, but people won't have heard it. So well, coming up, away. coming up to a fifth year of doing this. Oh, are we in the fifth year of doing this, Kev? I don't have no know. idea. Well, it must no, be cl- must be close. It is. Um, well, are we? And twenty twenty. We must have started oh, twenty twenty. Incredible, isn't it? Yeah. So I would have been in my mid forties when we started, and you in your mid sixties. Incredible. <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. All right. Smart, <laughs> Alec. <laughs> um, yeah, I, so it's 2020 when we started. It would not been going long, had we? 
before that thing that I hate to mention came along. Uh, um, COVID, Kev, COVID. He, oh, I thought you meant Steve Vaughan. No. <laughs> no, him too, obviously. I don't believe there's a there's an injection you can have for him, though, is there? <laughs> Not I one I do, I do, I do come out in a rash when I'm near him. <laughs> oh, poor Steve. Love you, Steve. Love you, Steve. <laughs> poor Steve. Yeah, so this is in our... our, our fi- we'll be coming up to our fifth year soon, Kev. Whoa, woof, five years. Um, we should do something. But we should. But we probably won't. <laughs> No, but we'll talk about it a lot. Yeah, five five years means that some of those questions, some of those listeners from those very early days, they've retired from this now. They're mm. listening to um, I don't know. My dad wrote a porno or whatever that other podcast is that seems to be very very popular. There you go. Look, sorry to interrupt. January the eighteenth, two thousand and nineteen was, was our it? first show. Oh God, we, we were going for a full year before that horrible thing came along that shall not be mentioned. Y- yeah, pretty much about. Yeah, because when we went to Switzerland to shoot that wedding together, yeah. remember we were recording on the on the way. We did. Uh, Have you paid that speeding ticket yet? <laughs> <laughs> you told me you were going to pay it. The, the Fuji cast meet Kevin and Neil as they review Bob Mouse's a potent photo book about London's iconic underground culture. Right. Neil goes on a Sydney photo walk with Fujifilm ex photographer Marcus Anderson, yeah. and the new mailbag feature. Answers your questions about things. <laughs> ah, there we go. They, How your titles have changed. They they were in the days of having money to go and um, go to Australia. Not that I went there specifically to talk to Marcus, but yeah. Anyway, so before we start with the questions, one thing that has changed over over all those years is that we we picked up a sponsor. And uh, thank you, Pick Time, for sponsoring this program for quite a while now, actually. It's a service that we both use. It's just the best gallery system I think either myself or you, Kev, have ever used to display our wares following weddings and uh, corporate things and horse events and stuff like that. Um, if you if you want to sell your wares to uh, to clients and you want them to look at a gallery that looks like it could be a website, not something that's just you know, uh, as we, I was about to say, the platform that we used before, other platforms are available. But this thing really does look stunning, doesn't it, Kev? The way it lays out, the way you can choose which pictures to make your uh, your champion pictures, your hero images. It's just a great way to display your work, isn't it, after an event? Yeah, yeah. And we've talked about it loads and pick time for those that are kind of um, professionals or even kind of semi-pros or just looking to sell. It's It's definitely worth looking at, of course, um, but I think what, uh, you know, when I chat to other photographers, what people like about it, uh, so much is that it, it's, you know, they're constantly improving it and, you know, there's always updates, there's always new ideas, there's always new features, you know, they, they, I think they were the, certainly the first ones to bring on this idea of kind of, um, AI grouping of images yeah, and all of that yeah. various stuff, yeah. which, you know, you can switch all these things on, you can switch them off, um, Obviously, you have the art galleries and all of that kind of stuff. That's that's just, you know, I, we were. I well, I certainly was using a system way in the past where it was very good, but I don't recall any updates in the in the seven years that I'd been using it. Mm. So it's really nice to be involved with a system that I know that you know they will be constantly making it better, mm. and and they change. You know, they also what they do is you know they keep an eye on design trends. So much like Squarespace, in fact, they, you know, you can, you essentially offload the responsibility of, uh, of the website and your gallery to, to them, to pick half time, to make it look good and work in mobile and, you know, and conform to new, to latest web standards. You know, it's just, yeah, just works. Go to pick hyphen time.com. And if at checkout, you've decided you want to be a part of uh, that team as well, our team, actually, Kev. Then, um, then just enter the or, or type out the word Fuji Cast. <laughs> Are we still saying all uppercase? It, well, we must because we don't know the answer. Yeah, we don't know. Put um, it in all uppercase, and it will definitely yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. And you're gonna, in, I wish somebody would actually write in to us and say, you know what? I tried it in lowercase, and that also worked. And then we yeah. can stop doing it. We'd save about <laughs> eight minutes every episode. <laughs> enter Fuji Cast. You'll get a month free. And Kev will stop looking over his large eyebrows at you because he'll think you know the secret too. Indeed, indeed. Can I just thank and, um oh go on. No, go on, go, go, go. I would no, I was gonna do something completely unrelated to, to photography, but it was a kind of while I remember because I know he listens to the programme. 
Right. Well, hold that thought then. While I remember, mm. I just want to thank our latest patrons. And we don't mention this very often, mm. but we do have a patron page, which you can find uh, very easily by typing in Futurecast patron or clicking on the website link, all of that various stuff. Um, and uh, we, the latest ones are Connor Goes, Eric, Jeff Petrie, and Martin Smith. Right. So thank you to those for joining our patron and for the price of a coffee a month. You get an extra two shows a month. Yeah. Um, patron pop-ups, we call them. They're pop-ups. kind of 10, 15 minutes. Musings and thoughts from myself and him over there um, <laughs> every other week <laughs> to the main show. You're horrible. Aren't Don't you? be rude. Absolutely. Thank you, Donald. Um, I'm not sure you should be playing Donald at the minute. <laughs> well, I think he's tied up with other matters at the moment. Um, I think that was the problem. He was tied up. <laughs> no, he's just a busy bloke, Gev. Our, our Phil, our Phil Payne. Um, he listens to this program, so uh, so a shout out, as the kids and the youth would say, to Phil Payne. He sent me a really interesting film. Did it come through Click at Fujicast? It might have done. I I don't know. Anyway, he. Um, do you remember Radio Caroline? Yes. You probably don't remember it from the very original days, and before you say, nor do I, Kev, because in the sixties, Radio Caroline was uh, was a pirate uh, radio ship. So you all had to dress up as pirates and wear a an eye mask and you're allowed to broadcast as a DJ because there was only one radio station in the UK at the time that played um, pop music and that was uh, the BBC service. Now, that wasn't even Radio 1 then. It was BBC, what was it called, Light or Light Programme or something like that. And and they hadn't even found the Beatles, apparently. I didn't realise this, but they, 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 you know, during those years of the 60s, BBC had no, all those ruffians, the Beatles. So it fell to a pirate radio station, Radio Caroline, to, to broadcast the music of the Beatles. And uh, you can still, in these days, and that's the reason why uh, Phil sent it to me, I think, is if you've been a, a radio broadcaster, I don't suppose you have to have been. You could sort of go out there and try your hand at it, I suppose. And I'm telling you, Kev, because you've done a bit of radio now, you can go out there and spend a weekend. There we go. Well, hopefully the food won't be that bad. But you can spend a weekend out there being a Radio Caroline DJ. Kev, on the boat. On the boat. Mm. Does, that float, does that float your boat, so to speak? It does a bit, actually. I do like the sound of that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're obviously not going to get paid. It is a, it's, it's a, an experience to be on the Ross Revenge, which is the, the ship now. And, uh, and you will be on there spinning your discs, Kev. Spinning your discs. Yeah, no, that does sound that does sound interesting. I have to say, well, if you probably see, not anything I will ever do. But well, if it's your sea legs, well, I'm going to sign you up. If you're if you're happy, I'm signing you up after the show today. Me and Kev will go out there. We could do a podcast out there, couldn't we? We could. Yeah. <laughs> Talking of yeah. podcasts, have yes. you seen? Um, we'll get back to Phil in a minute. Hold. On. No, that's <laughs> it. That's all. Over. Phil, oh, thank you for it. that. Right. And and yeah. m- uh, myself and Kev. Uh, we we might be out there on the Ross Revenge. Kev's, um, Kev's spinning the Phil- country tunes, and I'm. Uh, I don't know, leaning over the side or something. I don't know what my sea legs will be like. I think Phil, for some godforsaken reason, is leaving our beloved Wales and heading to Suffolk or Norfolk or he something is, yeah. soon as well. Yeah. Anyway, good luck with that, Phil. Um, Bodkin. Bodkin, yes, I yeah, I've I've seen Bodkin. And Have you watched Bo- it all? No, no, I've not watched it all. I've watched quite a bit of it though. But Bodkin has done the same to podcasting what television films usually do to wedding photographers. It points them out right at the start to be just this kind of hobbyist thing, doesn't it? I know it changes a bit as it goes along. But when I first saw it, I thought, oh, no, you've made us out to be like the wedding photographer, like like film companies make wedding photographers to be out, you know, to, to be, you know, like the sort of hobbyist brigade. Do you know what I mean? I do know you've said that, but I didn't think that. Oh, at the um, time I did. I thought it was brilliant. I, I really thought it was brilliant. Very funny. That's amazingly well filmed. Mm. And like the light and the composition of the shots and everything was a superb. It is, yeah. Excellent acting um, and, and a really, really good storyline. Mm. And at no point at all during any of it did I think Gilbert is Neil. Oh, not yeah. at all. Not at any point. <laughs> oh, thank not you. Not once. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, if you want to find out what Gilbert looked like. Then... <laughs> no, you definitely don't look like him. But no, you, yeah, no, I, I, I actually, I know you've said that. I, I can appreciate what you're saying because yeah, you're yeah. obviously a serious podcaster, whereas I am a hobbyist podcaster. <laughs> no, you're not, Kev. We've been doing yeah, it five I, years now. We've established the fact we're in it. We're yeah, in, but you we're know, in you're it. The, we are. You're, you're the one with the voice. Uh, um, uh, but yeah, it's a, um, I thought it was brilliant and just an entertaining watch. 
Yeah, it's, you know. it's called Bodkin. It's it's on uh, Netflix, isn't it? It's a Netflix, Netflix one. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know whether it's on Netflix in every si- single region, but if it's in your region, Bodkin is is a definite must watch, isn't it? As yeah. well as, as well as Ripley, by the way, uh, which I think we've uh, talked about already. Yeah, but I still haven't watched it. But I mean, you're right. I've, oh, I've been told by so many people to yeah. watch that. It's a very slow start. Okay, for photographers, um, Ripley is a for anybody who loves black and white, and you're certainly in that camp, Kev. Yeah. Um, then, then you absolutely adore it. The way it's shot, the cinematography, the treatment of it, the oh, it's just. I mean, it's a, it, these are delicious black and whites. This is no salad of grey. This, this mm. is um, you know, this is film noir at its at its best. It is slow to get started. It's like one of those books where you think, oh, all right, I'll see it through. I've got a train journey. It's five hours ahead of me. I can at least get into it. Yeah. Once you're into it. Ooh, Kev, you can't put that down. So you must watch that, Kev. Yeah, I will. I will. No, no, we we just finished Bodkin last night. So, so there we go. Rip Ripley's next. I've got finished Bodkin. Although there's a new series of Deadliest Catch coming. So, well, there we go. That. That's you for the next three months. Yep. <laughs> right. Questions. Nigel Baton. Hi Neil. Hi Kev. I've been thinking of a question that I don't think I've heard answered before, and I think I have one. So here goes. If you could choose one genre of photography that you had to do but could only travel 15 minutes outside your area, what would it be? You can't use a car, it can't be product photography, and it must be your main source of income. That's not a tricky combination of things, is it? No. Well, everything was working out fine till he said it must be your main source of income. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Mm. 15 minutes on foot away from the middle of nowhere that I live. (laughs) Yeah. Did he not? Did he say on foot? I oh, know. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he can't use well, a car. Well, he said yeah, without so using a car, but really we don't need a train station either, and we only get one bus a week. So, so you've you yeah, got to, you got to walk from the centre of Malmesbury 15 minutes for this. <laughs> I think then, in that case, that ha- for me, it would have to be something rural, mm. farming or environmental. Uh, so you become the James Revillius of Malmesbury. But you got, as he said, he's got. I'm not sure you're going to make income. money. No, you're not going to make money. I mean, not going to be making money. Not straight away, anyway. Um, I would then suggest possibly the Duke of Suffolk lives within 15 minutes of my house walking. Okay. And Wait. he may or may not need a photographer, stroke filmmaker for his everyday events, business, website, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. That's that's where I would go. Oh, I'd go over to the Duke of Suffolk. You're putting a lot of faith in the Duke. I am. And he would definitely say no. Well, haven't you also got um, the uh, the Hoover guy? Oh, no, don't say Hoover. Dyson. you got Dyson. Di- <laughs> you got Dyson. i tell you what, Kev. That's um, true. That must really up- upset james dyson that probably people still say i like your hoovers yeah i'm going to do the hoovering later with the new dyson <laughs> yeah, that's it <laughs> yeah he's um, uh, yeah, is, is he within 15, 15 well, minutes walk factory. i mean could you oh could yeah you that's like a six minute walk the dyson head office do, do you remember when i i it was a while ago i came to stay we went out for an indian i i i came to stay what was that pub halfway up the high street in malmesbury king's arms king's arms i stayed at the king's arms in the morning, came down to breakfast, and it was like a, you know, nobody's up. There's just one landlady. Margie. Um, what's, what's her name? Margie? hmm Oh, actually, you, you know her, do you? Mm-hmm. She, well, she, we know everybody. I certainly know all the landlords. I'll, I'll, the be, very, I'll be very careful. <laughs> um, she, she was uh, doing everything. She was running the place, um, making the breakfast. She was doing the lot, Kev, everything. And there was a guy that came down for, for breakfast. We were the only two people in the room. And um, you know, it's impossible not to talk to somebody. There's only two of you. You can't ignore them, can you? And I said to him, so, so what are you doing in Malmesbury? He said, I am here working for Dyson on a secret project. Yeah. And he wouldn't tell me what the project was, but he said it was no. so secret. But yeah. it was going to... And this is true. They do have, uh, they have like secret rooms and departments. Do and they? Like their NDAs are... Uh, they, you know, nail you down very, very tight. You so, know? so they do. They yeah. are. I mean, in fairness to, to James Dyson, he he he's an inventor of the, yeah. the of the traditional magnitude. Yes. So yeah, I don't know. He prob- when was this? Tell me when this was. Oh, was. oh, it would have been. Do you know? It probably was in the first year we were doing the podcast before. So it was. Yeah. It, it was probably the electric car project then. 
He's so he was, he was oh, working he, on Yeah, I think he mentioned car. batteries. Yeah, electric car batteries, which they, they mm. moved, they bought up Halavington Airfield. Right. And shifted it all, all production there, built these massive walls so nobody could see in or anything. Mm. And then at the end of it went, yeah, we can't get it to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> on, honesty is the best. Yeah. Uh, the best policy if you really can't make it work. I'm not sure what I would do, Kev, within 15 minutes walk from here. Um, I quite like the idea of, of I mean, Gi- my friend Giles has got hometown stories. That's his, that's his biggie. And he's, he's gradually, well, he's documenting as many people that live in the, in the area. Yeah, but is that his primary income? No, it's not, you see. Well, this is it, yeah. Well, I I was, we do have, hmm, I might have to walk quickly if it's 15 minutes, because I think it's a bit over 15. But if we can stretch that a little bit, Kev, and I walk quickly, I could probably just about get to Greenham Common, the former airbase, where they have a huge, it's a huge business park of, of businesses there that, I know I've done some photography up there. Look for photographers to to cover the building of it because it's expanding. It's like an empire, Kev. It's expanding, and they use photographers up there. I suppose I could do that. None of these jobs, but that's none of the original mines, sound no, very exciting. Do no, they? The, it's, and it might stretch into product photography. I can't do that. He said we're not allowed to do that bit. It would have been a much easier question, Colin, if you'd if you'd not thrown in that it has to be the your source of income. primary income. Because you know, otherwise, yeah, because then I I would have added Greenham Common in because. The um, because it still has old military buildings that you're only allowed to go in every so often by special permission, mm. and that would make a great project, Kev. For example, the uh, the have you have we ever been up the airfield together? You and no. I walked. No, no. Well, I must go. There's an air traffic control tower there, which is brilliant, and they have art galleries in there, photographic galleries, all kinds of stuff. It's really really interesting place, and best bacon butties ever. But that wasn't apparently, and, and, and having met somebody who had an awful lot of knowledge about the area, said that was an air traffic control tower. Yes, but the real one was underneath the armory, which is this grey building which looks impenetrable. Uh, but right underneath there, that's where the real control centre was. Because of course, what's the first thing you attack if you go yeah. to a, you attack the air traffic control tower? But if you didn't know where it was, harder yeah. to do. Although I would find it quite hard being an air traffic controller underground without being able to see the aeroplanes through the windows. Well, you'd have a periscope, Kev. They'd give you a periscope. <laughs> oh, I'm bloody glad oh. they don't still do it this way. <laughs> Camera or something. Well, it, it obviously works in the military. Oh, but yeah. There we go. I'm sure they've, they've got all kinds of clever things that we have no idea yeah, about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nigel, that was a really thought-provoking question. And I think what it's, what it's um, actually um, shown is that myself and Kev... If we weren't doing what we do know how to do with a car, we'd be absolutely brassic. We'd have nothing. Would. Yeah. yeah. No money at all. <laughs> exactly. We'll yeah, to- no, that, that was an interesting... Yeah, it was. I like question. questions like that. I like that. Right, go on then, Kev. Top that one with, with one from Facebook. Uh, Sam Taylor says, Hi, Kevin. Hi, Neil. Uh, my question is, which do you think are the most underappreciated lenses in the XF lineup and why? The photographic world seems obsessed with seeking perfection in lenses, but personally I find it satisfying to work with the limitations of a lens and find ways to get the best from it. Now, he goes on to tell me which is his favourite one, but I'm going to leave that for a moment. Right. I know what would be mine straight away. uh, And then he says, thanks and warm regards from a sunny Cambridgeshire. Ah, lovely. Uh, Sam Taylor. So I will will talk about what he mentions in a moment, but go on, what what would be yours? 1024. 1024. Yeah, I think it gets a bit of a pasting from a lot of people, doesn't it? It's oh, it's a bit ropey around the edges. And uh, it's a first gen lens, isn't it? Or the one I've got. I'm I still... think there's two of them now, isn't there? Is there two? There's, so I've still got the one an update. Yeah, well, I've got the one that you had years ago. This now this is a lens that you let me have in the end. Yeah, uh, I I vaguely remember that. Yeah, yeah. Happened. And I love it. I think it's it's it travels everywhere with me. And but it gets a bit of a pasting from people this lens. It's not it's not a well-loved lens in the uh, on the roadmap or what was the roadmap according to fred miranda the new 1024 is exactly the same optical design as the original right. which i think is probably the one you've got yeah it will be the old one was optically fantastic so there's no reason to alter it fujifilm fixed the issue i had with it by adding ceiling and a marked aperture ring so why did people but they made it smaller and lighter i did that ah okay well it's not yeah. that heavy anyway actually and weather sealed 
Ah, uh, right. Original, okay. wasn't no, weather no, sealed, wasn't as far as I remember. No, no, no. no. And Although the, I've used uh, it in all sorts of rains and snow and everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, that whole weather sealing stuff is, is in my mind, is, is you know, a bit of a gimmick, I've got to say. You've got to be in some pretty desperate weather to have, you know, reasonably expensive equipment go wrong, I think. Well, uh, that, I'm, not saying it, I'm not saying that people don't get themselves yeah. in those weather, and especially dust. Like, I, I'm, I'm far more worried about dust and sand than I oh, am yeah. about rain. X, the X Pro One that I've still got. I remember when Thomas was much, much younger, and he, we went out to look at the steam train arrive. At uh, I think it might have been the Flying Scotsman that came through Newbury, and it it stops at the race course because the fire engine turns up, and gives it water. So it's quite a spectacle, and loads of people turn up to see it because it's a, an historic train, isn't it? And I yep. I took my X Pro One there on a on and I put it on a tripod don't know why it was on a tripod anyway it was on a tripod it was right next to the uh to, to the to the front of the the engine and i've made a couple of pictures and i think i had another camera with me as well i'd gone up the other end to get pictures of people getting on and off and then the train pulled out it was snowing as well it was quite romantic kev it was snowing and the train pulled out and i forgot to take my x-pro one and my tripod i drove home mm-hmm. and home's about what five ten minutes drive max and it was only when I got home, I'd been sat down for about half an hour, and I thought, oh, I haven't got my X-Pro1. And uh, I raced back to the station. Everybody had gone by then, the fire tender, everything had gone. And there was my X-Pro1 on a tripod, still sat there in the snow, covered in snow, still works to this day. And nobody had nicked it, Kev. Most people are actually decent. I think so. Of what the BBC tell us. Yeah, that's true. So what would your uh, lens be? What, what's well, my, mine would be the same one that Sam actually picked. So wow. I'll read out what he said in the middle of this. For that reason, I am a huge fan of the 60mm macro lens. Oh, yes. It's a lens which certainly has its weak points, yes. especially when it comes to autofocus yep. and lens flare. But it can also produce quite beautiful results. True, I might not take it to an event where speed was an overriding concern. or Well, speed at all, I would say, Sam. But when I can work at a more relaxed pace and I love the results. Mm. So, yeah, I would say that 60 mil lens also, which I know that you do have my version of I that. was going to say, you don't we, have that. You don't have that lens. We have, a, we have <laughs> I've got it. I know where that one is. I know where the 1024 <laughs> yeah, is. I've got it. The various other ones that I've lost. It's in short. here. Look, there's your one. Um, and yeah, I loved it. And you know what? I was reminded of that lens recently because I did a um, post on my website about. Uh, the X Pro, and mm. you know, will we ever see an X Pro Four? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. And part of my um, uh, the video and the post I put together was uh, showing some pictures I took with all various versions of the X Pro cameras. And I took some, well, I think they're really nice, very very close macro shots using the sixty mil of buds of flowers, heads of flowers, whatever you want to call yeah, it, lovely. on the X Pro One. Yeah. Um, using the extension tube as well. So it's like super, super close Ooh. up. That lens, the 60 mm lens, it was a funny aperture, f2.4, um, was, is, I still think, is one of the, the sharpest lenses that Fujifilm have made in the X series. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. And, you know, uh, I don't know why it was never updated. Maybe because of that weird focal range, 60, what does that work out? 60 mil, what does that work out in Six, real world? 60, let me do the, t- uh, 60 times two horses and a goat per square inch is 90. Uh, okay, so 90 is a reasonable length. But yeah, I mean, uh, I yeah, I love that lens. And it's very, as a portrait lens, it was amazing. It made the most amazing pictures. However, you could easily go and make a cup of tea while it's acquiring focus before you come back again so there was a very big big flaw with it like that that was one of the was it one of the original launch lenses 1823 I, I, I think it might have been you gave that lens to me didn't you is that another one of the ones you gifted me i've lent it to you <laughs> yeah. i thought i might be able to sort of get you into that oh did i did i actually give that one to you i must have i think it'd be i think it's great for um filming as well on, on i've been using focus. it i've been using it for filming yeah yeah, so there you go, 60 mil macro lens for me also. I've been, this week I've been on a bit of a moan uh, about legacy stuff and, yeah. you know, why are we why are we hearing rumours of, you know, X-Pan cameras and, you know, GFX yeah. um, uh, fixed lens cameras, etc. 
And, you know, why are we not hearing rumours of X Pro 4s and X Series, you know, advancements? I'm being, getting my grumpy head. The on. X Pro 4 is the one you want, isn't it? That's it. Then your life is complete, isn't it? Well, until the X Pro 5 comes out. Yeah. yeah okay. But yeah, I mean, we, we have no, and, 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 you know, like, like I say, the 60 mil macro, I mean, it probably didn't sell very much because it was so slow to focus, but we work on that. You know, we don't need, I, well, I don't need, people may need, but I don't think that many people need a like eight mil fisheye lens or a X pan, whatever, you know, I, I, it's been really interesting this process this week because I really stamped my feet about this and okay. most of the comments I got were yeah 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 we need the next pro 4 keep going future film keep going future film yeah. and then but there was a, a, a very obvious subset that were like no 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 that's boring we want X pan and we want you know advancements in this and that and you can easily tell the people who are professional photographers and who are hobbyists and I'm not saying those hobbyists are bad photographers yeah. but they're looking for stuff to enjoy using but is not essential for their work and the people that really want the X Pro 4 typically seem to be people who, you know, have done the same as me, really ends up going down the XT route because it's a fantastic camera, but in a body that perhaps mm -hmm. they don't really want. But yeah, there's a definite kind of marked amateurs, even though they might be better photographers technically than me, but not making money from it, are like, yeah, 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 let's go for the the wide X pans and do this funky stuff. Shake the funky chicken. I'm like, let's get rid of the funky chicken and let's just keep the turkey on the straight and Lara. What on earth is Kev talking about? <laughs> have you, I very nearly started swearing and then I thought, have no, you been not. on the mushrooms this morning? Mushroom tea for one for Kev. Uh, following that question, right, this, this is almost like planning this. You can either have one about bodies or you can have another one about lenses. What would you like? Bodies. Bodies. Slightly different body to the body I think you were expecting. It comes from somebody called Dear Salinda. It's a great name, isn't it? Dear Salinda. Do you see a niche for boudoir photos to sell, maybe photo books? I've seen a few, but not a lot. It's something I perhaps want to focus on. Any big do's and don'ts about that genre? Thank you. Well, you're probably asking the wrong people in that respect, because I don't think either of us, Kev, have released a book of boudoir. But you did say body. You did <laughs> say anything, body. really. No. Um, I mean, how, how saucy does it get for you, Kev? Well, you're going to get in trouble by saying that because boudoir is not a so saucy. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Connotation. Oh, oh, I know. Sorry, sorry. Um, Rewind. Yeah, Where would I mean, you go the, with this the question? Most obvious, the most obvious thing is you need permissions and uh, how many people would give you permissions to publish, you know, intimate pictures of themselves, yeah. assuming you do get the permissions. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, you have to be careful that it doesn't, it doesn't become something that's more of a salacious sale. I, if you, if you like, you know, there's some amazing boudoir photographers out there that, that produce great art, yes. but also there are some, you know, some people that, that don't see it for art, no. you know, and when you put it into a public place. So yeah, I mean, why not? If you, if you've, but absolutely you need nail down permissions for it and i think in the with the world we live in these days you know i'm forever saying to to rosa you, whatever you put on the internet will be there forever whatever you say to anybody in a in a snappity chappity or whatever they call it or you know whatever <laughs> it, it's there forever so if ever you become yeah. prime minister or a nun <laughs> or <What>? a, <laughs> <laughs> famous, famous jockey. This is quite you extreme know. between the two, prime minister or a nun. <laughs> somebody, somebody will dig out everything, yeah, you know, and I, I feel yeah. like I've, I've, you know, with my kids at least, I think that the message is there and I think with a lot of kids it is also, but, you know, so that, that thought process might go through for the people who are, uh, you know, have had uh, boudoir photos done and you, you can tell who they are, you know, in a lot of cases you can't, mm. it's quite anonymous, which is, which is, you know, fine. Um, you know, in the future, they might have kids, they might already have kids, they might have grandkids, they, you know, their circumstances might change and they might wish they hadn't published those pictures, not necessarily had them taken in a, you know, in a, in a book. So, you know, I think as long as you have the permissions, then absolutely in my mind, and you think it will sell and it's done tastefully, absolutely. I think the challenge would be getting the permissions and that thought process that yeah, might go through the yeah. people who have been photographed. Anyway, ultimately, f waffling around, uh, if you've got permissions and you think it's a good, solid project, then absolutely, I think 
getting the permissions would be the hardest part of that entire process. I tell you what, that's a you know that point of snippety chappity chop um, saying stuff. Oh dear, I mean, what what a childhood to have to navigate, Kev. Oh no, I mean, it really is it's awful. Isn't it? I mean, you're, you're Jack Stoney's GCSEs now, right? Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. He's so on, a, is he's on a, as we speak today, though. He's on a study day. Yeah, so is Rosa. She's yeah. she's she's got day off today. Yeah. Um, well, not day off, but <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's precisely my point, Kev. <laughs> yeah, but the um, you know, couple. I remember doing my GCSEs and the stress that that has. Yeah. Um, I mean, I suppose for you it was O levels, was it? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and the stress we, that we, we used to write on a on a flint uh, with, with flint on uh, on what would you have on, on, yeah that's it but the kids today coupled with the constant chitter chatter from phones yeah. and social media and the the inter uh, the interference of simple things like netflix as much as we you know we watch that as an entertainment it's there we never had any of that those kind of problems i mean we obviously did have different problems and i'm not saying that it's a problem for everybody of course it's not but you know, I feel like I feel sorry for the kids today doing their GCSEs these these couple of weeks and A levels coming up, because you know there's just little things like you know Rosa had one exam and she was like, well, I thought it was okay, but um you know I thought it might have been a little bit easier, and then you know she was she was telling me later that one of her friends messaged her and said she thought it was really easy, and that made her very. Oh. You know that yeah. that puts her in a spin a little bit. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and so of course we never ha- really had that kind of. God, we're back to that thing. Yeah. We're back to that thing, Kev. Where where we, the wedding thing we've talked about, where somebody says, oh, "I'm fully booked. I'm fully booked to 2028." Mm. I am, and you think that's not real, but I'm still not feeling great about it. Yeah, it's social social bullying, isn't it? Really, is it bullying? Is it bullying? Yeah, it's not. I don't think not that's bullying, bullying so no, much, no. but it's 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 um it's narcissism, isn't it? It's, it's like look at me and I and if it's and smoke and mirrors mm. and yeah, you're right. You know the the, the the industry. There is a lot of that in this industry, sadly. Yeah. Right, Facebook. Come on, Kev. Your your turn. Your question from from Facebook. Okay, Dominic Tan says, Hi, Kevin. Hi, Neil. Have you updated to the latest April, May 2024 firmware for the various X-Series cameras? No. Apparently, (laughs) some people mentioned focusing issues after the updates. If you guys have updated, are you experiencing such phenomenon? Cue the Muppet song, yeah. Well, I haven't updated, Kev. I'm always slow to update everything. And on this occasion, maybe I'm pleased I am. Uh, yeah, I haven't updated that. Well, actually, I did update something. What was it? I think it might be my GFX. But uh, I I do recall, I have to say, Dominic, that I do recall one post in the Fujicast Facebook group where mm-hmm. somebody mentioned this. It might even have been you, Dominic. I don't know. Um, so there is something in the back of my mind that says that somebody else has, has certainly raised that. Um, I would be extremely surprised if, if it was a you know a real thing, a serious thing, Fuji Fujifilm generally pull updates and re-release if yeah. there's a flaw like that. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll do a little bit more research on that. I remember when the XT4 XT3 firmware four came out, and um, you know I, I immediately updated, and and it was it caused all kinds of havoc with the 56 mil lens. Oh, I rem- yeah, I, do. I remember you saying it now. Yeah. And, uh, and I spent a couple of very late nights, you know, with the, with the engineers in, in Tokyo on zoom and stuff like that, showing them and going over and they were sending me literally as we were, we were working, they were sending me updated firmwares to test on my camera mm. um, until it, until it got right. And they, you know, they, they put a, a, a big apology and, and re-released the firmware to fix any problem. So I would be, I would be obviously that you know, I'm kind of not involved at that level any longer, but I would, so I don't, I don't know essentially if there is a problem um, and what they are going to do about it if there is one, but uh, I would, I would think that they will, will or would have done something about it if it is a thing. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not. Yeah. I haven't seen too much. I haven't heard in my little spidey ears too much chitter chatter about it. So I don't know, maybe it's just one camera, one lens combo. Maybe it's, I don't know, something. Yeah. I mean, don't let us put you off doing uh, updates because it's important you do. Absolutely. However, that said, I think, you know, if you're, you know, if you rely on your cameras for um, commercial work, especially things like weddings, I wouldn't update your 
firmware, if you're happy with the, you know, unless the firmware is offering you a feature that you need going forward, I wouldn't update your um, yeah. firmware for a good few weeks after yeah, yeah, yeah. after release. And that's true of everything. You know, yeah. you know, early adopters often are the first ones to get bitten. Yes. Errol Ebanks has written in, Hi, Neil. Hi, Kev. I have a question about manual lenses. Would you or do you think it's wise to use all manual or vintage lenses for wedding work? While I know autofocus and lenses with both AF, MF can be done, and autofocus is incredible, would you recommend pro money making photographers to go that route, or is it not such a good thing to do? I would avoid it, Kev. I, I You know, I do have manual lenses that I have used at weddings, but it's usually when I've made my pictures and I think I'm really happy with that. I want I want some playtime now. Well, I wouldn't, absolutely. Um, I do have a couple of manual lenses, yeah. vintage lenses. Yeah. And they do make interesting pictures, but I'm not reliable enough to to get the, the focus right. Mm. So personally I wouldn't. But if you are uh, absolutely, you know, if you maybe if you're an old school photographer who always used manual lenses in the past, you know, from the early film days kind of thing. Not early film days, but some of the film days and you're you're on it you know you're you're nailing it or you you know you're you, the Leica um manual focus cameras for example yeah then yeah. yeah if you if you're competent in it absolutely i'm not mm. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm not competent in much to be honest with you <laughs> oh kev you're a good <laughs> horse photographer now we found that out me eh? yeah I'm a horsetographer horsetographer no, i'm not <laughs> sure that's going to catch on um <laughs> Uh, there was another one in here that's i mean i know we've we've made short shrift of that so here's one from Stephen shreve not shrift who just wanted to uh thank you for something so do you mind if i put this one in before your before yeah. your facebook question wanted to share a few photos using kevin's do you call it joel myrowitz or is it just a myrowitz film simulation oh, recipe yeah i i primarily shoot monochrome but this is my go-to for rural photography thanks kev I also purchased the complete Lightroom preset package earlier this year. He is a very happy man. They look good. Oh, look at good these. Stuff. These are your presets, Kev. Yeah. Bish bash bosh. Bish, right. Bash, bosh. Okay, your one from Facebook. Okay, Philando Jones. This is from 13 Ooh, weeks ago. Okay. <laughs> That's nice and up to date then. Yeah. Uh, for, but a big, uh, there, are, there are a lot more questions, and a lot of them are kind of techie ones, so I'm trying to even things out a little bit. Do either of you have any photography bucket list things that you'd love to do or a place you'd like to be? For me, politics aside, I'd love to somehow be a press photographer flying on Air Force One. Oh, yes. In the day as I see yes. it. Yes. With you're as talking. much respectable yeah. freedom of movement as possible. It's a stretch, but not completely impossible. Yeah, I, I know a few. I've interviewed a few photographers that have been on Air Force One. And one of the questions I always ask them is, what did you nick? And there was recently a something in the news where I think Air Force One, they've got fed up of, of photojournalists and journalists nicking stuff because they say, look, we give you the presidential M&Ms. That should be enough. You don't need to be marching off with other fixtures and fittings you've taken from the aeroplane. I think that would be great, though, Kev. Can you imagine that? The freedom to wander. Yeah. I, uh, yes, I, I, I think that would be an absolutely incredible thing. But no other country has anything like air force one i mean we have the rishi rocket well, let's be honest it's like a cessna compared compared to compared to the majesty of air force one with, yeah in which uh case, okay so what would yours be then well i was gonna say least. i'd love i'd love to um i'd love to go to space with uh and, and photograph space. from the international space station with a camera <laughs> well i mean I'm I'm, i think he was on about things that are you know, because he ended the sentence with it as a question with it's a stretch, but not completely impossible. <laughs> well, is it completely impossible that I go to the the International Space Station? They've seven, they've sent seventy five year olds up there, Kev, <laughs> or, or did they? No, maybe they didn't. Uh, I don't know. I might have to think about this while 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 you reveal yours. Okay, I well, I haven't actually thought about it. Now I'm thinking of something quite. Uh, I I just didn't ever expect you to say that. Never in a mile. Well, the international space. Can you imagine how amazing that would be, though, Kev, as a photography project? Oh, come on, Kev. Wouldn't it be boring? Not at all. It would. It's just basically people floating around and then doing the same thing every day. I'm not sure that those that have trained for months, nay, years to do that would say all we do is float around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair uh, enough. Yeah. Maybe that was a bit disingenuous. Uh, oh, I tell. But, I have thought of something. This is based on 
a wedding I shot at the weekend where the groom is an international sailor. Now, I think that a transatlantic crossing, that sounds fantastic. Documenting that, Kev. Yeah, that does sound that does sound pretty. Mine's similar, actually. In fact, I've got two. So my my uh, with my love affair with Deadliest Catch, I'd love to go on one of those fishing Ooh, trips yeah. into the Bering Straits and uh, with my well, camera. I tell you, both of both of us are going to have to work on our sea legs. Yeah, I'd be absolutely appalling at it. I'd be vomiting all over the place would but you? yes nice that would be it and my other one which is probably more achievable is to photograph every pub in britain ah oh. <laughs> that's more well, the ones that are still open <laughs> that's probably more achievable kev then, yeah uh, yeah they're opening a lot more again by the way they're yeah, uh, yeah i read they're, that yeah. they're reopening so may, may maybe maybe there's a chance for us kev to have the kevin neil pub hey eh? We've thought about the Kevin Neal coffee bar. I don't think you really subscribed to my idea of black and white with that, did you? You weren't that keen on it. Oh, yeah, that rings a bell. When, that was about four years ago, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, when we were talking about... I, 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 I might, might have been less. I, I thought a coffee shop called Black and White, because it mm. sort of plays into my, yeah. my love of, photo, of, of, of black and white photography and also the black and white coffee. See, black coffee, white coffee. I know you know that, but I just... Right. But what about a pub, Kev? Could we have a pub? What would it be called? Uh, well, I, yeah, I mean, I don't know what we would call it. Kev, Kevin Neal's, um, I don't know, with, with Smoking Dog's gone, I like the name of the Smoking Dog. Have to be something a bit unusual, wouldn't it? Something like, I don't know. Um... Well, during COVID, when, in that period of COVID where we were allowed to run people's gardens, yeah. you know, that weird time. Where um, um and the boys um we would we would go to each other's gardens and we all called each other's houses a particular pub. Oh, um, what what was yours called? Mine was called the Dragon and Dogs. There we go, the Dragon and Dogs. Yeah, because of the Welsh and the two dogs. Well, I do like your idea of travelling every single pub in the UK. I think that's a great photo project. Not quite I'm going to sure. start tonight. Yeah, are you? Okay. <laughs> at, at the Smoking Dog, funnily enough. Right, well, that's it for this week. Get your questions in um, to click at fujicast.co.uk or indeed through the Facebook group. The questions that are coming in a great and we do like the, the sometimes the, the unusual ones like like what we had at the start see you in a couple of weeks kev bye 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 the fuji cast is an independent loading zone production email the show with your questions and words of wisdom to click at fujicast.co.uk email any complaints and political nonsense to our wives who will deal with your comments in their own good time and in their own good way